you are sorely mistaken. We'll first go to the American side of things. Marvin Bracey, Gordon, goes 19.85, equaling his PB in this 100 where he won by over two tenths into a negative headwind. Now, Bracey, in the lead up to the trials, he looked like a contender for, for one of those top three spots because he had run a 985 in Miramar. Things seem to be shaping up. First round of the trials, he he looks good, runs a 10 flat, then runs into some issues in the semis and doesn't advance. But you know, since then, he's put together a whole bunch of races, um, raced quite frequently over in Europe and then now in, in Memphis. And I guess it's it's interesting to look at just how different people are approaching the post Olympics season, or in, in his case, the post Olympic trial season. But he's going to come away with this season at least with a pair of nine eighty fives. Yeah, and it's we talked about what ifs last week. Like, what if this mm. or that happened? What if he isn't injured in that semifinal because he pulled up in the semifinal, runs a seventeen second hundred. You look at the results of that 100-meter final at the trials. It was Bromel, then Baker, then Olympic silver medalist Fred Curley got mm-hmm. third. Now, I'm not saying Bracey would have bumped out Curley, but, I mean, it was a possibility if he was sharp and running a 9, if he was running 9-8 in the final. Clearly, he's been able to show he can run 9-8 more than one time. Mm-hmm. And it's just thinking about all of the permutations of what would have happened if Marvin Bracey is on that team, Fred Curley is the one getting fourth. Then all of a sudden, Curley is like going into that 200 at the trials with me like, I need to make the trials. I need to make the team the 200. That shifts everything around. I was just, you know, crazy things happen, especially when you see people who get third place in a qualification, like a trials or are the last one in on time, mm-hmm. in like a, a 1500. And then they go on to medal. Like yeah. uh, Josh Kerr, he almost like failed in the first round of the 1500. Like a lot of people passed him and he got in on time, I believe in the 1500 in the first round. I could be wrong at mm-hmm. the Olympic games. And then two rounds later, he's an Olympic medalist. And then you see something like here, like what if Marvin Bracey was didn't pull up in that semi and he runs nine eight in the final, and for some reason Fred Curley gets knocked out into fourth. We never have this awesome Fred Curley story. Uh, it just mm-hmm. shows how crazy this sport is. And Marvin Bracey, man, he he he's he's not going anywhere, right? You you think maybe there was a flash in the pan in his early season was nine eight. It mm-hmm. isn't able to kind of hold it together at the trials, but clearly it was not a talent issue at the trials. It was just a legitimate, you know, muscle pull or whatever causing the pull mm-hmm. up in that semi. And he comes back and runs nine eight. And if he stays a nine eight guy going into yeah. next year, we're gonna have a multiple. We're gonna have three nine eight guys, a nine seven guy, a Christian Coleman, and mm-hmm. you know some young kid coming in, Noah Lyles, if he wants to try to get back in the hundred. Ben Narek coming off of a silver medal in the 200. It's just going to be wild when he just added more and more depth to this men's 100 or the men's sprint field going into 2022. And I saw they're talking about him not being on the the Prefontaine start list because right now they announced the men's right after we got done recording. Right after we did the races we wanted to see in the end of 2021, they released a whole bunch of races and they ended up being eerily similar to the ones we wanted to see. I mean, I'm not saying that they listened live to the show and then booked people. That would be a coincidence. But the men's 100 right now, pretty has Baker, Bromel, DeGrasse, Gatlin, Gillespie, Curley, Norman, Sambine, and Young. So obviously a star-studded field there, a lot to watch for. But I hope that Bracey at, at some point finds himself in there, – there's opportunities beyond – pre this year, but it'd be nice to see him go back to that track against this top flight field and see if he can put up another nine, eight, because you make a good point about nine, eight, like nine, eight's what you need right now. Nine sevens are obviously put you in another stratosphere. We saw that with Coleman in 2019, but we saw a guy win an Olympic gold uh, with a nine, eight, and you can be consistent at nine, eight 
you're going to be in, in, in business. And the thing that people forget about Bracey, he's only 27. He was so good so young that I think we thought, okay, this is, this is it. He's like well past his prime. But he's still only 27. He had a, quite a few seasons where he, he didn't race fully because of injuries or I know the football thing. So uh, I, I wondered how cons- – the, the, the question with him is how consistent can he be over the next year or two? Because we've seen him at his peak. The question is, can he consistently hit those marks? I mean, I think he can. I think having this second 9-8 coming out, coming out of the Olympics, especially coming off the Olympic trial disappointment that he had, is gonna, he's going to be able to ride this into 2022 and consistent, I think consistently be a contender going into the, the next trials. And that's going to be a really hard team to make. Obviously, mm-hmm. Coleman has the bye, so you don't have to really worry about the addition of Coleman. But you know, maybe – Marvin Bracey you is... You didn't have to worry about Coleman was, this year, too, and it was still a really hard team to make. Yeah. That's maybe you have to... Maybe Marvin Bracey needs to tell Fred Curley, hey, man, don't worry about the 100. Just, like, go do the 200 <laughs> or the 400. Maybe some bank borrowing and dealing. I mean, because Baker's yeah. not going anywhere. Obviously, Bromel's not going anywhere. And there's going to be some new guys that come in. So, yeah. Uh, nine eight five. He's now run it twice. Yeah. Second time into a headwind. It's legit, so it's exciting. And, uh, you know, I remember Bromel, when I interviewed him uh, early on in the season, he was talking about how he thought that him and Bracey were going to go 1-2 at the Olympic trials. Obviously, it didn't work out because of injury, but, hey, I could, maybe, he wasn't, maybe he wasn't too crazy to say that because um, mm-hmm. if, he, if he runs a 9-8-5 in the Olympic trials – Maybe they do go one two, right? Yeah. You, well, he's, he's, Marvin Bracey is showing you that maybe it was more the injury than the talent that made him come up short after he went to nine eight five back now in August. So. How about that sprint group as a whole? Bracey, Bromel, and DeGrasse. Pretty good. Pretty good top three in, in that group. Pretty intense yeah. practices, I'm guessing. The other nine eight this weekend came. From Kenyon Ferdinand, 